that uh, tree limb is uh, next on the chopping block. Now this pond's got many perils. It's got depth, almost five feet in areas. It's got snakes. It's got a turtle or a tortoise. Eh, probably, turtle. probably a turtle. It's salt water, so it's got shark. Welcome back to Tumbleweed Ranch. On this episode, I want to see whether a big commercial van like the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter can it work as hard or maybe even harder than a pickup truck? Well, let's find out. This is our trusty John Deere tractor that currently we mostly use for mowing lawns. In fact, David, Roman, and Tommy have been working hard on this machine. But here's what I wanna do. I wanna see if I can load this tractor inside of that van. Yep, uh, at the end of the season, we'll have to bring this machine in for service and warranty. And what if we didn't have a pickup truck uh, that day? What if we uh, just wanna use a van? So. On this episode, I wanna see if that's possible. This truck right here is our long-term Ram 2500 Cummins turbo diesel, four-wheel drive, heavy-duty pickup truck. Um, and we've also used it many, many times here at the ranch. And to transport a tractor, you might be saying, Andre, what are you doing? Why don't you use a little trailer to move that tractor? Well, guys, that would be too easy. <laughs> We do have some trailers, but for this episode, I really want to put that Mercedes to work. This version of the Sprinter is basically a cargo van. It's a two-wheel drive model, although they also have four by fours, of course. But take a look at the payload. This model right here, which is a 2500, has 3,803 pounds of total payload, which is actually way more than approximately 2,200 pounds that that Ram Cummins has. So it's got payload, but is it strong enough and can you actually tie it, tie that tractor down? We'll have to find out. Before I get too carried away, I wanna see how wide this tractor is. And it does have this lawnmower attachment on the bottom of it. So I'm gonna set my tape, let's say over here and check it. So this is almost five feet wide here at the deck. Uh, maybe 58 or 59 Hmm, yeah, this may be too wide So I may have to just drop this deck on any full-size pickup truck. It's usually at least 48 inches between the wheel wells Let me check that. Yep, of course. So this is about 50 51 inches or maybe 50 and a half between the wheel wells. Let's check the uh, Mercedes This is one of their shorter length models But also a high roof as you can tell, I'm standing on the ground, just over 6'2". Yeah, it's pretty tall. We also have a new set of ramps. That's another reason why I want to do this. Uh, I want to use these puppies. These are heavy duty longramps.com ramps. And they'll be very handy because that tractor... Alex, how much does it weigh? Like it's about 1,400 pounds. That tractor is pretty heavy. So these ramps are rated to a thousand a piece, so two thousand. Oh, nice. Let's check the distance between the wheel wells. Oh, okay. So that's about 53 inches. A little bit more space than in a heavy duty pickup truck. Let me check over here too, because if the tractor is going to move in here, we want to make sure it doesn't fall off on this side. Once again, that's about 52. So yeah, uh, I think we have the width if we can remove that deck on the tractor. a tractor expert here but I gotta move these wheels up so I can remove the deck altogether now 
Now the final step is to actually swing these all the way up so this is free right here. Question. I don't want to damage this plastic part so I think I'm gonna go with go with it towards the floor and then I want to make sure that the width matches the tires I need to attach the ramps to the hitch or some other frame member of the vehicle so I so they don't try to go from underneath me when I'm driving up it because but that would be, make a good YouTube video, right? It'd be a great video. Okay, but I don't think Roman would be Roman happy. Roman would not be thrilled. Okay. By the way, the Sprinter can tow up to about 5,000 pounds, at least this one. So no, it does not compare as far as towing to that big Ram, which can tow up to 20,000 pounds. third diesel on the side yeah. we got a lot of diesels dude that worked really well actually you know you know why I was in low gearing here uh, four-wheel drive so I was able to just crawl 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 this is great I thought you were gonna touch that bar at the top but just made it yeah I was trying to watch for that well that went a little bit better than I expected but finally I got to tie it down I want to see how this van behaves with quite a heavy load inside of it. One good thing about tractors is they're multi-purpose machines and they're very versatile. You can put obviously a hitch here, this is a PTO and other attachments, you lift it up and down. But I think you could also you see, tie them to this frame piece as well. There are four tie downs two on each side in the back and there's four up in the front as well and this is probably a little bit heavier strap than I need but hey it's, it's okay you know what with this tractor in here same aerodynamics as before <laughs> we're not towing anything there's nothing sticking out you don't have to even wrap your straps up no just chuck them in the back hey all right, boom. Nobody can see that, right? Okay, in the front, I'm gonna be using these attachment points. They're also connected to the frame, so I'm just trying to be careful. And then there's one here on the bulkhead. There's another attachment point here. So technically you could also put a wheel strap on this if you really wanted to. Oh, and another one here. Gosh, I mean, you could. You could really carry some stuff. Oh, yeah, that's that's not going anywhere, I don't think. Here's the other thing I want to measure. Actually, two more things. I want to see how high or low this load floor is. Over here, actually with the machine in, it's about 28 and a half ish. Um, and we'll measure, of course, without the machine to see. Not a lot of squat though. But here, take a look at this. About 38 inches to the tailgate. 
And let me try to uh, attach the ramp to this so you can see the difference. While the ramp still works beautifully, I like this angle bracket here. It kind of hugs the surface. And of course you strap it down. But the angle, I don't know if you can tell, that's quite a lot steeper. Even though this long ramp gives you good length and makes it a little bit easier, I would prefer for this particular job, the van is a little bit easier because it's lower. All right, let's get on the highway. This is actually the current generation of the Sprinter. This is not a 2023 model yet. That model is going to look mostly the same, actually identical from the outside. It will have a newer 2-liter turbocharged diesel. This still has the V6 3-liter turbocharged diesel, so let's fire this engine up. And because this is still the current generation, it has a 7-speed automatic. Column shift! Okay, you can move it like this too. Uh, but it's got a 7-speed automatic. Okay, parking brake off, lights on, we're moving out. Still, many high-tech features. For example, backup camera. Ooh. <laughs> Do you hear that? There's a little bit of something kind of rattling in the back. But the great thing is also this one has this bulkhead with a window and the bulkhead uh, prevents a lot of the noises because it's not finished on the inside of that cargo compartment um, and it's just pure metal. So it can be kind of hollow and echoey, but this bulkhead prevents that and it's also carpeted up here. So actually for the driver and passenger up here, it's relatively comfortable. Of course, air conditioning is here. Automatic AC. And like I was saying, this is not a four-wheel drive. You could definitely configure your Sprinter as a four x four. And it's gonna be like that in 23 model year as well. All right, I reached some pavement. So let me give it the beans. The transmission is really smooth shifting. And it revs to well, almost 4,000. That was not full, full throttle. I don't want to start drag racing with that tractor behind me. Uh, but I just wanted to see how it performs. And you know, this V6 still has a lot of torque. And a seven speed works fine. Um, and they're obviously improving that getting it a little bit more efficient for the upcoming model year with a nine speed automatic. But look, I've been driving for about 12 miles ish. Um, some of it without the tractor and now several miles with, and it's showing 16.8 miles per gallon, which is not like incredible, but it's still not too bad. All right, let's see if it's still here. Aha, it is still here. So I think what we heard, we heard a couple of clunks. So that was part of it, I mean, on this attachment. And also I think these pins are over here hanging down. But other than that, it's been really, really solid. So pretty happy with it. All right, so the tractor is out and I'm near about 29 and a half, maybe 29-ish here. So barely squatted like an inch, maybe less than an inch. But we were using less than half of its payload. So yeah, kind of makes sense. I wouldn't squat too much. And still a low floor, which is pretty awesome. And take a look. The floor is still in good shape, nice. I also want to do this demonstration. Commercial vans are known for maneuverability. Really short and narrow turning radius. So let me see. Let me make a turn 180 in the Sprinter and then do the same thing in the big Ram and see how they compare. All right, I'll be making a 180 turn 
inside of the space of our future Tumbleweed Ranch barn. So I'm gonna crank it all the way over. I already can tell that the commercial van, well, that's why they're used for deliveries. They have really good turning radius. I can turn all the way around inside the footprint of the barn. <laughs> With room to spare, let me go check. There, I'm gonna put my tape right here where the uh, sprinter left off. Ah, uh, yes. Now I'm inside the big Ram Cummins diesel. Of course, the use cases are drastically different. This big heavy duty pickup, uh, I mean, it's meant to tow heavy trailers. It is four wheel drive. It can do quite a lot of work as you have seen on our video series. Uh, but nonetheless, loading its bed can be tricky. Okay, I'm gonna line up the ram in the identical position where the Mercedes Sprinter was. There, I'm on the blue line. Now, gonna turn the wheels all the way, locked, two wheel drive. All good. And go. Turning, 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 turning. Ooh. I would have hit the wall of the barn. I think I almost crossed it. There, I made my turn. Let's go check. Okay, first of all, my tire crossed the other boundary of the future barn here. Um, so I would not have been able to make a full turn inside in one go. And then, where is the tape? Oh, wow, <laughs> that was close. So that's where the outside of the sprinter was. So I'm about a truck width further is about what seven seven and a half feet so yeah the van wins the maneuverability contest well there you have it yes the commercial van can be very very useful at the ranch I think you saw that today uh, it's not all rosy though because this van the way you see it here with a three liter v6 diesel is also fairly pricey at about 55,000 bucks with all the options you see here and it's a cargo van not four-wheel drive, so it is a bit pricey. Just one more thing, Tumbleweed Ranch series. The video series is gonna take a couple weeks off because David and the team, including myself, uh, I'm doing the first leg of Northern Lightning series with the F-150 Lightning EV truck. We're gonna be the first to take an electric pickup all the way up to the northernmost point in Alaska, Prudhoe Bay. So Tumbleweed series is taking a little bit of a break uh, but you will see more Northern Lightning series videos on TFL Truck. And of course, you'll find everything automotive at oldtfl.com. But don't leave this channel completely because this area right here where the barn is going to be built, within about a month, you'll see more videos from here and the barn going up. <laughs>